guys, it's Alice and today I'm going to tell you about the books that I've read so far in November. All of the books that I've read so far in November have been non-fiction because I'm participating in non-fiction November and the first book that I finished was Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs by Caitlin Dowdy. This is, like I just said, a non-fiction book and it's written in a type of like Q&A format and the author, who is a mortician and funeral director, answers questions about death, dead bodies, and funerals. Although this is a book about death and dead bodies, this was actually really fun and quite educational. I feel like I learned quite a few new things, which is always great. I think it's great to have books like these around that answer questions you may have about death and dead bodies and it also answers some questions that you maybe didn't even know that you had and it's really interesting to learn about. I think there's a lot of stigma around death and dead bodies and this offers up frank and honest information about what happens to our bodies when we die and sort of what it looks like and I think the more you know, the better it is. Now, I've previously read the book From Here to Eternity by this author, which is excellent. Both of them deal with death, and I can't help but compare the two a little bit. Both of them are well-written and very informative and respectful, and both of them have quite a lot of humor in them. But I feel like the humor in this maybe tries a little bit too hard, like you can sort of tell. I think that the humor in the other book flowed a lot better than it does in this. I can't really tell what audience this is supposed to be for, but based on the way that it's written, I would guess that it's maybe meant for a slightly younger audience than me, and maybe that's one of the reasons parts of this feel a little bit juvenile to me, and maybe that's why the humor didn't quite hit the mark. I still really enjoyed this though and I learned quite a few new things, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The second book that I finished was The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. This is a history book and it takes a look at the lives of the women killed by Jack the Ripper in London in 1888. And it takes a look at how these women weren't just, contrary to popular belief, just sex workers or even sex workers at all, but they were complex people all with their own stories. This was a really interesting book and I liked it a lot. I think it's so interesting when someone takes a look at something infamous but from a different viewpoint, especially when it comes to history. I just think that's so interesting. This conjures up Victorian London and what it was like for just regular people and we meet these five women who came from different backgrounds and they all had their own triumphs and sorrows and we really get to sort of explore what it was like to survive as a woman in this time. The book also comments on broader issues like the problem with focusing so much on a killer and how much easier it is to allow yourself to be fascinated and obsessed when you sort of eradicate the humanity of the victims and you sort of just forget about them. And it also comments on like putting people, in this case these victims, into a box. Like you place these five women into a sex worker box and you just call them that and that's all of a sudden all that they are. And it sort of comments on how sad that is and I think that in history we do that a lot. We probably do it a lot, even today. My only slight snag with this book is that I felt like it was a little bit too dense in parts, and sometimes it got a little bit repetitive, but overall I thought this was really interesting and I really enjoyed it, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Second to last, I finished Over the Edge of the World by Lawrence Burgreen. This is also a history book, and this is about Ferdinand Magellan's daring circumnavigation of the world in the 16th century. So that was the first time anyone had traveled all around the world. This was a reread for me. This is actually one of my favorite nonfiction books of all time. And it was so much fun to reread because I hadn't read it in like five years and it's still so good. There's just something about this story and this topic and the way that this book is written that just totally pulls me in and makes me want to keep going. Even though I've already read this so I know what happens, 
I just love this part of history and I love the story and I think it's so interesting to sort of look back at history and try to get a sense of what people thought the world was like back then and how scary and unknowable it must have felt like but also how incredible it must have been. Also, one thing that I didn't really notice or think about the first time that I read this, but that I think is one of the reasons that I love this book so much, is that the author is really good at like letting us getting to know the people in here. And for someone who loves reading about characters, I think that's one of the reasons I love this book so much. You really get to like know the people on these ships as much as is possible at least. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars when I first read it like 5 or 6 years ago and it's still a 5 star read for me and it's still one of my favorite nonfiction books ever. Lastly, I finished The Curse of Oak Island by Randall Sullivan. You can really tell that I love history because this is also a history book and this one is all about Oak Island which is an island in Canada where a teenager discovered a pit in 1795 and that sparked rumors of buried treasure that people have been looking for ever since. So this was an interesting book and I love reading about stuff like this, but this ended up not being as engaging as I would have liked. If you like history and stories of buried treasure, you're bound to be interested in Oak Island. And I think it's so interesting, like the whole legend of this place and how many people have become obsessed with trying to find this damn treasure. And I really enjoyed sort of getting a comprehensive history of everyone who have been involved and where all the rumors and the legend comes from. I thought that was really interesting. And I think it's just interesting that people can become so obsessed with something like this. I think my biggest problem with this was the writing though. There's just something about it that I couldn't quite like get into and it wasn't fun. Like my favorite nonfiction books are really fun to read. They can be filled with history and facts, but they are also like fun and engaging and enjoyable. And this was interesting but I wouldn't say that it was particularly like fun to read. I think that the writing is very straightforward and it's not always dry, but it's sometimes a little bit dry. And there, I don't know, there's just something about it that I couldn't quite get on with. Like we're introduced to a lot of people in this book, but most of them just feel like names on a page and that's kind of it. And I found that a little bit disappointing. I did like that this picked up its pace towards the end because I felt like it started off quite slow and it stayed quite slow for a good while and then towards the end it really like picks up but it also gets like more absurd towards the end and it went into all of these different directions that I wasn't expecting and I don't really know how I feel about that. Overall, I did like this because I thought the topic was interesting but it was just a little bit lacking when it came to the presentation, I think. It could have used a little bit more color, like a little bit more spice, you know? So I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. Okay guys, those are all the books that I had to talk about today. I'd love to know what you guys have been reading lately and if you are participating in Nonfiction November, what have you read so far? I will leave a link to my other social media and my Patreon in the description if you're interested and I will see you soon. Bye!